This kid's shrapes. Now we're gonna start the rave at 3 p.m. Oh my god, I think we're actually gonna get well service. Hey. Hey. Oh shit, for real? Oh, you are peeking too soon. I saw as I stepped in the room. I'll probably jump on this tune. As soon as I stepped out the womb. Woo! As soon as I walked into class. What? Yeah, the teacher, she gave me a pass. Oh, uh. Stand on the table and dropping some magic. So everyone's shaking their ass. British oh, people! Oh, shit. Right, it's Friday. British people, grime. Grime. British, British grime. <laughs> British, British crime. crime. Guy Richie made a career on British crime. Yeah. State of. Have you heard... Hello, everybody. Have you heard about this new movie? Have I seen this? Have you seen this? Have, Have you heard, heard about, about this? this? <laughs> that there's the new Guy Ritchie movie yeah. called Argyle. Yeah. It is based on off a sweater. A book about a sweater. That does that has a mysterious author that nobody knows. Oh, now I'm sweating. Alright. My goodness. The rumor is sweater. That this is written by Taylor Swift. What? what? <laughs> oh no! Is she and you know what? She's done sneaky. She she, she does wrote that Rihanna sneaky song. Sneaky things all the time. She did that Rihanna song. Or uh, uh, I Calvin love it. Harris. I yeah. love it when we do this show and it's only the original cast and we're missing nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, and it just looks Taylor Swifty. Now that I've seen no, it, no, and it's so it, because it has. This, there's a whole thing about a cat and it's the same cat that she has, and they had a big deal about the author. And there's been rumors for a while because it got optioned into a movie immediately. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's just big argyle. Just big, big argyle. Big, big, big argyle. Flex, fle flexing their It's got John Cena and Dua Lipa. Yeah. And uh, I heard Scott John Cena, and I thought that was really I, clever. I, 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 I did too. <laughs> He's my favorite streamer. Can, slash can, can we start talking about our favorite morning stream producer, Scott John Cena? Scott John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> They do, a, they do a different cover of the jingle every week. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're going to do some weird things Oh, here. my goodness. It's a normal episode this week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to replace I'm this feeling part. great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm raging in the pan, waiting to get out. Oh, really? Yeah, because I've been sick for a day and a half. Oh, no. You're not still sick, are you? No. D uh, I woke up uh, today, was, no fever. Was, 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 was it a flu? It was just con crud. Yeah. Ashley came back with TwitchCon con crud. But I was fine Tuesday. I got molly whopped with it Wednesday. Molly whopped. Molly whopped. I want to take that. Uh, you're talking about Molly Wood. Got into, let's just move on. Uh, <laughs> Come on. There's nowhere that that improv goes that's that fun. <laughs> I don't know. Her as a rapper. <laughs> Cause that's where WAP comes from, I guess. What? Uh, all right. Okay. No. I, no. Again, there's there nowhere what, good. Uh, no, nope. You saw. You saw the window. No. You saw also, the window. Also you said and I initially denied. left it. Yeah. Okay. And also, you said right. get into her, which was also yeah the thing that we skirted past. All right. Let's uh. Mm. Come on. Skirt. Skirt. <laughs> skirt. skirt. <laughs> You guys want to do a show? Yeah. Let's uh, do a I, weird I, thing I, show. I just want to do a, uh, a podcast acknowledgement that uh, the Bones podcast This podcast was, previously was belonged. Without Justin yesterday, it was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> we we it think great. The, tri the, the Brushwood tribe, <laughs> the Castillo tribe. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. I'll have to listen to it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should one day. Maybe one day, one day I'll listen to it. Hey, everybody, make sure you I'm the only person who listens to any of it of the three of yins, the three of us. What? Uh, oh, no, I go back and watch it because I, because I, the uh, bones. You watch the bones. I listen to the bones. You watch the bones. No, I, you watch the bones. Where do you watch it? On a television? Do you adjust the rabbit ears to watch? The bones. Okay, the bones is different. Watching the bones. The bones is different. Why would you watch the bones? Do you just watch the waveforms come in <laughs> on this audio only podcast? I, I can't watch the mm. The bones is on. Eagle eye brushwood <laughs> watching these bones jingling and jangling. I, I, what I, do your magic eyes see, yeah. brushwood? I can't. You're a vulture. 
Because you watch the bones. <laughs> I can't. Uh, uh, because I have like 75 different emails and you have to be logged in on the right email in order to see that stuff. Uh, the bones, huh? I don't watch, but, but I do. We're eventually mm-hmm. going to never hear from Brian again, either in person or online. And it's going to be because he lost the wrong password. <laughs> To talk to there each is, other. There is, yeah. I'm gonna there is. I'm going to phone numbers? Yeah, you're just going uh, to. Pin number? We'll, we'll just run into you at a Target in Sheboygan and we'll be like, mm-hmm. Brian, what happened? He's like, yeah, I lost the password <laughs> for my car <laughs> and my life. <laughs> I just didn't know how to get into it and I figured I'd just start anew. Well, I, 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 since then, I've been walking the earth asking, have you heard uh, uh, the great news? Have you seen the great news? Have you news? seen the bones? <laughs> <laughs> the great I, we have to do the show. I used we to are. watch the bones. <laughs> now I can no longer. Then I took an arrow to up, my pinch. What's up, glasses? <laughs> glass. What's up, glass yeah, what's wipe? Up with the glasses? Are you, are Dude, I swear to God, lens wipes, not even once. No, like, but, like, like uh, he told nobody. Me this. No, you don't know this, Bryce? You know, I know. He says it all the time. He's addicted to lens wipes. And I don't know. Like, they're good. I don't. F- that's fine. It's just alcohol and paper. It's like the best thing you can be addicted to. Yeah, it's 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 cocaine. It's just coke and cane. It is the it's <laughs> no, it really is fine. It's okay. Okay. Right. It's literally just isopropyl alcohol. Isn't it? This has all been real normal oh, talk. Could we in China. please get a little bit weird? Let's get weird. All right, let's do it. Here we go. In three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, your host as always, joined with my co-host as always, Justin Robert Young. Sup? And Brian Brushwood. Yep. Always been here. Always will be. Loving yep. the energy you guys No are one else is normally here or traveling currently, to my knowledge. That's right. Nobody in the world is traveling. Everyone is at home. I can neither confirm nor deny. It's that- the national day of, 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 of breast. Three, two. Okay. Well, with this is the Weird Things podcast. We got some great stories of science, the strangeness out there on the internet. I have some stories for for you, uh, gentlemen. That was a Bermuda Triangle of silence. <laughs> uh, it, it, Justin, you uh, you recently got your kitchen redone. I did. Have you thought about upgrading your cookware? Yeah. You know, uh, 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 sure. We we were kind of talking about your cookware. My mm-hmm. cookware, yeah. Seemed to be made of a little bit of oh. plastic, a little bit of metal, like maybe a, a little bit of uh, uh, Teflon. Yeah. Hex. Uh-huh. Hex clad non-stick pans. Yeah. Cookware, baby. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe. You know, uh, we got a whole new uh, set there, so maybe we should get cookware that, that reflects it. Yeah. Get, maybe maybe this cookware is a little too low class. I get something to step it up. Aristocratic cookware. Yeah, you know, uh, are, I think the are, best. Are, are all three of us just going to be ironic the entire episode? No, I, I think know. just the two of you. Yeah, okay. Brian, <laughs> we're just going <laughs> to be right, ironic right, the fine, entire fine. episode. I have a lot of stories to get through. All right, we're uh, going to blast through them. <laughs> we're blasting through them. Uh, how how hot do you think your cookware should be able to withstand? Ah, uh, geez, realistically, yeah, be able to withstand. It's probably double what my my uh, uh, stovetop would put out just for safety, right? You don't want your cookware to catch fire or melt or anything like that. Yeah, right. I, I, ballpark I, it. I I would imagine, um, I'm not speaking to Justin's cookware, but like a like a cast iron uh, pot or whatever. Yeah. Uh, High uh, heat tolerance. Uh, 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 Two thousand twenty five hundred Fahrenheit is yeah. is about the point. I would say two thousand and one. A space odyssey. Two thousand and twenty one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, something okay, like that. So, so twenty twenty would be a bit weird. Yeah. Mm. So, mm. so roughly maybe twenty percent of the surface of the sun. Wait, is that how cold the sun is? Uh, yeah, the surface of the sun is about ten thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Man, I feel I feel like I could go up and kiss that. Yeah, well, and I think you could with the Ninja Never Stick cookware. They have claimed that they heat their pans to thirty thousand degrees Fahrenheit three times the temperature of the surface of the sun. Why? Uh, Do they just want to fry the celestial bodies? <laughs> also. Uh, if I remember correctly, like the surface of the sun is kind of the coolest part. 
Uh, it's actually hotter outside the sun in the Corona. Well, and, uh, and it's also hotter inside. Is it oh, like okay. when like, like you can like run your finger through a flame, but you but if you put it on top of it? Yeah, yeah. On, only 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 it's Circulon and you just sort of whip it through. Circulon? Oh, yeah. Circulon. What's, Push the cube to my chest. I, 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 well, it's like uh, Cafalon uh, cookware, only it has circles on it and it has um, Teflon on there. So oh, it's, it's like a brand of cookware. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. gotcha. Yeah. I thought it was. A... So wait, Push the so, cube so, into my chest. So these uh, guys, uh, do you want to get off that <laughs> cube joke one more time just to see <laughs> yeah, whether or not anybody is. Transformers Yeah. There we go. That's how this movie ends. You put it in my chest because it's a cube. Remember the Bermuda Triangle? Triangle from earlier. <laughs> That's where back. the laughs for those jokes went. <laughs> but Justin, it was empty when we were there last time. I know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird things, baby. So uh, the, the company claims that uh, it, it can be heated up to 30,000 degrees Fahrenheit or that they use a process that heats it up to 30,000 degrees. It doesn't matter because uh, aluminum uh, uh, melts at like four. 4,000. It turns into gas at 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> well, so, it, it melts way lower than that because I've definitely tossed a, an aluminum can into a campfire, which is maybe at its heart like, you know, 1,900 degrees Fahrenheit and watched it melt in there. Yeah. Uh, there's a lawsuit now asserting that Shark Ninja's marketing exaggerates its nonstick qualities to charge higher prices than competitors. Uh, there is apparently a, ver a rather old article de uh, detailing a ceramic coating process. Um, I, I want to say that this article is o over five years or old now. Um, and that process on other pans heated the particles to 30,000 degrees. But so far, Shark Ninja hasn't said that that is what they use or uh, given so any So we more think that they're that. using a scientific method called lying. <laughs> Well, uh, 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 yes, more, uh, uh, Your Honor, um, Avocado. who's upset about this? <laughs> it's a pan mm -hmm. that 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 figured out that what if we said a higher number and did some gymnastics? Yeah, to who's find out? who's bringing the suit against Shark Ninja? Mm. Uh, it, uh, Patricia Brown is attempting to uh, uh, to have a class action lawsuit here, and. Um, uh, 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 it, it, part of it is is uh, oh here we go the claims are quote a little more than a glitzy deceptive marketing technique uh, says the suit that convinces customers to purchase its never stick products which are more expensive than nonstick pans from competitors like Faber Farberware um, we still don't really have a comment from Shark Ninja about this so this is a lawyer that may or may not have even purchased one of these things mm. sees the gigantic gaudy claims and then is looking for other people that bought it that want to join into a class action lawsuit over it. Well, I, I think what you do is you bring the class action lawsuit first and then say, who wants to get who, paid? Who's in, who's in on yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Can, like, we, like, can this even be a class action right. lawsuit? Right. Uh, first, you see the ridiculous ad. Then your eyeballs spin around and they come up. And then your ding, mouth ding, ding. opens up and you issue a press release. Gotcha. And love, that's why we're that. hearing about it because they've made sure to send it to eager media outlets that are like, what? We're doing a good thing by revealing the scumbags behind this pan. I mean, it is. Look, if if it's true, it would be an easy thing for them to say, yeah, we use this process and. There's a compound, and so it's not. Well, the question is going to be I mean, exactly what they said and exactly what they promised, and whether or not mm -hmm. that violates any kind of law. Uh, the, there are more stringent, like free speech stuff is limited when you are taking money for things. So you can't just kind of say anything and have the full um, protections of like the First Amendment. Right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I would say it sounds like. Brian, you're you're kind of on Shark Ninja's side here. I mean, I will say this much. Hmm. If there was a crime, mm -hmm. I would hope that there would be a six part series explaining oh my God. what how happened. Many? When did it happen? It's just how many people are even gonna get Who this so long ago? <laughs> and it wasn't on this show. It was yeah, it was a joke on our show. It didn't it wasn't it like wasn't, a meme. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, congrats. They got busted in marketing hype. Like, for example, 
Um, if I sold a iron skillet cast or whatever, it's like this iron was forged in the heart of an exploding star. That's true. That's how iron is made. Because all iron is forged, forged in, in the heart, heart of, of an exploding, exploding star, star right? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, no. Which is how sorry, Apple is selling the titanium phone. Uh, are, are they sure. literally doing that? Literally, it's like the ad is an explosion through the cosmos and a little piece of metal uh, flying through the rings of Saturn and then landing in Earth. And it's like, now it's your phone. Mm. <laughs> Titanium. Well, it, 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 plus, also, it's like uh, in marketing land, this is a tale as old as time. Going back to Apple is just like a Gandhi, a, 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 a Richard Dreyfus, a, a guy a, skateboarding. Exactly. Yeah. Jim Tony Henson. Hawk. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you should buy an Apple. Apple okay. Apple, Apple. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna counter you here and say that this is this is pretty different. In that they are using hard numbers. We we've been looking at a couple of graphics hard. that say thirty. Come on, man. That say thirty thousand degrees Fahrenheit. And I think cr whether we use a capital C crime word or not, yeah. Like if, if if this is an objective fact that they're putting Deceptive. out there, and did, yeah, either did. it's true and and they can just show it, and it's it's just boop, or it's false, and then maybe they should change so, the wording. Yeah. The, the question I think legally that they're going to have to figure out is. If it is found to be deceptive, was it deceptive on a level that made people buy it? And and that's what the class action lawsuit is going to be about. Is is this company is going to try and settle uh, if it believes it's in the wrong for whatever uh, uh, you know they yeah the the the, the lawyer is going to push for. But mm. uh, well, and and it's it's a bit like um, I don't know. It's the world's first frying pan made in space. Oh my God, that sounds awesome. Guess what? All frying pans are made in space. They're all built out of exploding stars. So well, I guess so the, the question is, where would you... All right, here. Mr. Shark Ninja. Mm. Your pan Watch. is... Uh, uh, <clears throat> has, Mr. Shark Ninja was my father's name. You could call me Teddy. Hi, Ted. Uh, your pan is advertised mm. as being able to be heated... To three uh, thirty thousand degrees Fahrenheit, yes, t uh, three times more than the surface of the sun. Yeah, how is that true? Uh, well, <laughs> if uh, uh, we understand that there are places that are three times hotter than the sun, and we see no engineering thing that causes us to not be able to heat this to that amount. What? I mean, there's no reason. We choose to send this pan to the sun, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Okay. Uh, 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 a truth dart comes in. How are you going to win this lawsuit? Uh, what, 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 are you, what are you going to say to prove that obviously this is a, 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 a bombastic claim and and one that is unrealistic for any cooking scenario if, uh if i'm actually trying to win the lawsuit yeah. uh the the lawsuits are won and lost on the the idea of the reasonable man right like uh what reasonable man thinks that we went to the sun and held this pan up to it no three sons uh, <laughs> three sons yeah Wait, what reasonable man believes that we gra gathered three sons and we're like okay can you can y'all get like real hot together and then we'll just Okay, thanks, guys. You're great. Go go back to your Centauris. Yeah. It's like, well, why don't you sue Red Bull? Because I didn't get any wings. Ding, ding. But I think that's why they stopped using that, low, that, that branding. Yeah, yeah. Remember how they stopped it and I didn't just see it yesterday? Yeah. And it's no. not still their primary campaign? I think campaign? it's still their, yeah. Mem I remember they when they stopped it. promoting the Flutog where people build weird-ass okay, things with is, wings? Yeah, I could. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I guess the, 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 although Red Bull gives you wings is pretty direct, <laughs> right. right? It is as direct as we heated this pan to 30,000 degrees. Also, technically they do give you wings. They just don't show the footage where you run into a tree and die. They're metaphorical wings. And mm -hmm. physical wings. Red Bull. You got to pick a side on the improv, man. You actual <laughs> wings. <laughs> if you feel like flying squirreling down a mountain. So we'll find out more about. Oh, they bought you a squirrel suit. Yeah. And then and there then was an accident. Died. 
but they don't show those. So this was okay. We were getting to that. It's, it's both metaphorical and physical. And physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I always thought the wings were made out of buffalo parts somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> buffalo wings. The, what? Do we still got buffalo? For a long time, Not I thought that. Not next story. Just next. <laughs> this one's haunted. <laughs> nope. This nope, one's nope. haunted. <laughs> nope. Hold on. Why? Just take, shh, there, shh, <laughs> just take a moment. Take a moment. This is our last episode before Halloween. Just I want you, let's all take a moment. Imagine, oh Bryce, he's so happy. He's, no, it, <laughs> he's got. He goes to the garbage bin behind mm. Pluckers. <laughs> he takes all of the wings and he makes the bones, and then he takes the strips, and then he he says, "I will fly so far," and then he jumps off a cliff. I I just I didn't know. Uh, no one told me that they they are the same thing, buffalo wings and chicken wings. As a kid, I didn't know. I didn't eat. I didn't eat the motherfuckers. I had. I had Jesus chips. Bryce, are you serious? Can How you yeah, Are you being right you now? Also, <laughs> mark your own curse word. Oh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the producer. <laughs> I know. I'm, in, I'm in my. I'm in wing mode. <laughs> You just MF'd on the <laughs> weird things. <laughs> Did you really but think I, that? <laughs> I really, because I didn't have chicken wings. I don't know. It was not. Had they not I made had, it to Virginia yet? I just I never had them as a kid. We always had KFC or uh, fried chicken. Okay, okay. I want you to picture the bone structure of a buffalo and figure out why you would need a bunch of bones about about three inches long. Why would they name it that? Because they come from Buffalo, Buffalo New, York. New York. Tell that to the children. Put that in Sesame Street then. Let Barney tell them. Hey, kids, Buffalo is also because of the sauce. They named it out of the city. It's not made of Buffalo. It's chicken. <laughs> it's called Buffalo. I don't even know where to go with this. <laughs> I renew my call for next door. Okay. <laughs> it's got another story here. Uh, we were talking about Apple earlier, if anybody remembers that. Uh, it seems like uh, Apple will be retiring uh, possibly the iTunes app on Windows, just like they've did on Mac OS, which could mean the start of the shrinking of the iTunes brand uh, in Apple uh, in, in Apple services. Things yeah, that would make sense. That would or would not. It would, yeah, because yeah. they've 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 been pushing everything to music. Well, number one, they they've been depreciating all of the i things. In fact, I would make the argument that. Uh, this would probably be the most enduring legacy of their i thing nomenclature. I don't know what else is the iPhone, I guess. But even iPhone, that, maybe yeah, that builds off of iTunes. I think all everything, I guess, builds into iPods and i, I iTunes and and the iPods. I mean, so yeah, iPhone, iPad. The, but it, those are just such iconic brands that, that they might never let go of it. But uh, other than that, they have tried to not name everything. Everything has been Apple blank and not I blank. Right. Which, which is um, a bit curious to me because uh, Apple, that's two, ser uh, two syllables and uh, what, five letters as opposed to one letter. But, but the I thing, I think that it was just too difficult for them to protect yes. legally. From too many, I mean, you work for a website called iTricks. Yeah, exactly. Right. We were infringing. <laughs> BBC iPlayer is a yeah. Is no, a I think they, they, they just lost control of that, and and also, I was a spinoff of E. Everything was E things oh, before yeah. that. Emacs. Yeah. So, uh, yep, 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 yep. I, I would say, I mean, the other big sea change is that iTunes came at a point where people were. Very excited to rip CDs mm -hmm. onto their computer so then they could put it back on another device. So an era pre-ubiquitous uh, mobile connectivity, that was the cool thing to do. And iTunes was the way station where not only could you easily in, the, in that era do it, but also buy other content through their store to also put on your mobile device like a iPod. Mm -hmm. Once we get... The iPhone, once we get full mobile connectivity, now streaming is just a thing. And streaming revolutionized 
the music world more than the iTunes store did, largely because the studios wanted to hedge against Apple because they're like, this deal we have on iTunes is terrible. This is awful. Like, We'll never get a worse deal than this. Sure, we'll sign off on all these streaming contracts. And then they're like, what? We ran from this deal to an even worse deal, and now we have literally no outs. So the music industry is hilariously stupid and uh Apple was very happy to be like, sure, we'll we'll take even more advantage of you with Apple Music. Uh, uh, but sure, yeah, iTunes now no longer has that reputation. So, so what does what remains of iTunes legacy? Like, like uh, I, I I haven't opened or touched the program for yeah. maybe four years now. So, so the iTunes app on the phone is where you go and purchase music. Um, it used to be where you also bought TV and movies, but then they moved that all to the TV app. When they right. made the TV app, um, uh, uh, same with uh, podcasts. Podcasts, they made a podcast. And, and podcasts app. got its own app. Um, and uh, even on the Mac OS previously, iTunes got also split out there into music, podcasts, and TV. So I presume we'll see something like that. Um, from Intigo's reporting here, global digital music sales have dropped significantly from their peak in 2012, but still represent a sizable portion of Apple's services revenue. As streaming continues to grow and music downloads dwindle, it's possible Apple will retire fully the iTunes name, possibly. What do you guys think about that? If they, if they would they get, because I don't think people have an affinity for iTunes. I think they respect it. I respect it, but I don't want to use it because I've used it a lot and it is not pleasant to use and all that stuff is wireless now. I, I, I would say, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, any set of instructions that begins with the phrase first open iTunes, like <sighs> I suddenly do not want to read anything else after that. I mean, but you guys are also describing, uh, uh, I'm, I'm already pre buying nostalgia for iTunes in the same way that there was nostalgia for uh, Napster, janky apps that you just spent Lime a lot wire. of time on. Exact Grokster, Grokster, E Donkey. Uh, uh, yeah, like like th th there's th yeah nostalgia, nostalgia for iTunes will will be a thing, and it will happen sooner than you think. Everybody's gonna be making those uh those those uh those those uh, green screen ads that they would do with the iPods, and they'd dance and they would track the iPods, so they made it like a big light trail. That was that was a huge huge deal. I mean, like that's like iconic, uh, iconic advertising. Yeah, those like, like that was for a moment in time. That was the place in a post or a declining MTV world. That was the place where people got famous. Like none of those songs were super big. At, like when they first started, mm -hmm. but like they all became gigantic. We uh, 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 we have a connection to the person who pitched this and develop this as a uh, ad concept it's uh, it's it's really weird to see how iconic it became yeah um well there we go uh we'll keep an eye out on 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 buy tunes more like mm. more like buy tunes buy comment tunes buy tunes that's what i wrote in my in my document B -Y -E or b-u-i well not anymore not everybody buys their music i don't i mean but but so you're saying that they might kill iTunes on Windows, but it is still here on my phone. Well, they they so now it would just be another store. Presumably, they would they might move. Well, I don't know. Right? Either they have the music app, which is really focused on your library and the Apple Music streaming service. Um, if they also put the store in there, that kind of butts heads with the streaming and the the selling stores. So. I can see them continue to use the word iTunes store because there are some things you do on the phone that you still do through the iTunes store or you can do. Um, I, I don't know. I think I think there's a, a little bit of clarifying that needs to happen. Wait, you want to know the uh, number one albums? Oh, please, please. On on iTunes? Oh, absolutely. I need to know what they are. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll go from 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. At 10, 10, Babytron's Megatron 2. Push the tiny toy cube into my chest. Do you know Babytron? I oh, don't. Uh, we all know Babytron. Right. Do, 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 do. Number nine, The Rolling Stones. Okay. okay. Their I've new album, one. Hackney Diamonds. All right. Uh, okay. Various artists are at number eight, a tribute to the Judds. The Ju but not actually the Judds. I, presumably not. 
Uh, Maverick City Music, The Maverick Way Complete is seven. Alexandra K, All I've Ever Known at six. In This Moment, God Mode at five. The Gaslight Anthem, History Books at four. Duran Duran. Oh! Still doing it. Shock him. At three. Is that a best of or a, or a studio album? Uh, Dance Macabre. That was released in 2023. Released, oh. uh, I think, today or tomorrow. Oh, wow. Uh, no, today. Duran Duran's got a new album out. Hey. Bet you didn't know. And uh, they could not crack the uh, the top because of it's- one... Taylor Swift, yeah, whose deluxe version and non-deluxe version are at two and one. A, they, new, a new album? Does she, the new version of her old album, 1989. Taylor's version. Taylor's, Taylor's version. version. Also, the deluxe version costs the same amount as the other version. Oh, right. Oh, well, and also... They still they still have to do like explicit versus clean versions of albums, especially those big pop ones. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, speaking of speaking of the young people, uh, the uh, you saw this. Uh, did you hear about this? Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a court case at the moment about uh, uh, one Sam Bankman Freed, uh, uh, the, the the crypto guy. Yeah. And one of the things that The Verge pointed out here is that there is quite a lot of. Uh, millennial vocabulary within the transcripts and the documents of uh of the case have you guys followed any of this case I, it's I, very techy i have read i don't know is the michael lewis book out it is out it is out it is being criticized for being a bit too sympathetic to his uh sam being uh, uh, sbf's has, case has okay. anybody has anybody read michael lewis before he uh, falls in love with his subjects yes like you know, so that that should not be a shock. I I can't imagine somebody reading a, a Michael Lewis book and being like, like, oh, it's crazy that you that like you take their side. Well, even if it's not taking their side, he's going to describe. All right, this is inside. I think that Michael Lewis's greatest fault is that he tends to justify in his writing why he's writing about things, and I don't think he needs to at this point. I think at this point we're like, no, we care about your keen insight into this. So you can write with whatever you want. But I also think that there's a reason why people keep inviting Michael Lewis to hang out with them for a year at a time. And so that, that is not, uh, that is not shocking to me, but Mm -hmm. I will say that I read a teaser from that book or a chapter from that book that they published. Mm -hmm. And my God, does Sam Bankman Freed sound like every gamer I've ever met? <laughs> like the fact that this entire multi billion dollar thing rose and fell based on this one dude who's just like, Yeah, I left my company and I hired a bunch of people because I figured it out. And then it's like, He stopped showering. He played video games all day. He wanted to, like, so the big fight in this chapter was he wanted to. He built a program that would auto trade crypto. Mm. And so instead of this being like a hedge fund where they would, you know, use human examine the actual values of things, understand what they were buying and selling. Exactly. And then and then have a human make the call. So it's moving fast. Right. Right. Timing is an, an, an issue, but it's not automatic. He's like, no, this sucks. It's too slow. Um where I'm just going to build this program that trades in the margins and watches all these different crypto markets from around the world. And so if I can buy it and make like a cent by moving all of this from one, from uh, cashing out on one thing and reinvesting it in another thing, then that would be the way to go. Uh, He wrecks the company over it. Everybody's like the transaction fees would be insane. Well, no, no, no. They they just, they were already losing a lot of money. Okay. Uh, and so his team was like, we're going to quit because you're you're going to rip through all this, the, all the rest of the money that we have in 15 seconds if this thing goes wrong. And so they agree to turn it on a little bit and it doesn't do great. And then everybody leaves and he's like, well, fuck it, turns it on. And that's what makes his company. Hmm. It makes so much money. Right. So fast that all of a sudden because everyone's, it works until does it, it work. doesn't. Uh, no, the the other problem that he had was that he kept leveraging stuff after stuff after stuff. So in this chapter, this is the beginning of it, but also there it's a, it's a personality study of 
his relationship with the girl, Carolyn, what's her name? Uh, that's what this chapter was about, was like how they met and uh-huh. her like falling in love with him and him just being a sweaty, unwashed gamer <laughs> the entire time. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so so in this in this case, uh, the jury the- and and uh, uh, lawyers are baffled by acronyms. Uh, I don't know that it's well. I, I it's the law, and so you have you do have to like explain things sometimes, right? You have to very flatly like. Like here, uh, he was asked about, um, uh, he had mentioned a YOLO thing in uh, one piece of evidence and had to explain it. He says, quote, when you do a YOLO thing, it's something that's spontaneous and not premeditated. And I wanted to have Miss Ellison confirm that indeed, you know, they had meetings about this and there was a deliberate decision, as I suspected it would be. Well, and that that actually kind of does track because I believe one of the charges is conspiracy and a conspiracy would be everybody decides in advance to do a thing. Whereas a YOLO decision is quite literally, I don't know, YOLO, <laughs> let's yeah. do it. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard uh, that that actually could be counter evidence saying, well, clearly it's not a conspiracy because they just flipped a coin and decided to do it. Well, they've got documents and the the thing that we were talking about was a bribe to Chinese officials and it definitely happened. So, um there's 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 some amount there's some amount of that, but I don't think it's enough to um bring him out of the fire. I just All right, this is a bad idea that we're bringing this up on a recorded oh, no. thing. Brian, I'm going to ask you hmm. to please start committing more crimes. Financial crimes, a lot of crimes. Here's why. Okay. They'll never be able to pin it on you. Right. Because it won't be up to me. I'm going to flip a coin. No. Because you only speak in metaphors. So if you go to jail. <laughs> all your communications And, you, and are all safe. your communications are uh, uh, like. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, a, like a buckaroo bonsai. But instead, it's like Data dreamed it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like it's like when I don't they... want to go all you can't do that on television. <laughs> I, but I'm just you're saying. Never... Explain that to a jury. <laughs> Good luck, Johnny Law. Brian's <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank. This is like you when have... they this is like when they break up drug crews and they've used like emojis to hide all their codes, <laughs> but no one can figure it out. Emojis, even. emojis are low tech compared to this. He's like the quantum computing <laughs> of, uh, of of codes. <laughs> okay, on the one hand, you have a uh, Pedro Pascal. On the Hand, do you even know why they call them Mounties? I mean, <laughs> you just, just in the middle of this show, you did a reference to McMillions that that it took <laughs> us, it took us like like thirty seconds to get, and we're the ones that have joked him then about you. <laughs> if you, I, if, I, I, if, if like, I, if I, if like I, were I asked, hey Brian, how much, how much should we put on this drug deal? And you uh, uh, wrote me back and said. Justin, what you have to ask yourself is how you did it, why (laughs) you did it. And then I gave a thumbs up and it's like, hey, what went on? We know it was millions, but the jury? Absolutely not. I feel like I'm at the end of Lethal Weapon 3 and I'm saying metaphorical immunity. (laughs) Oh, oh Bryce! This uh, uh, we're gonna need money <laughs> we need to it. fund this criminal enterprise, <laughs> and that's gonna come from Patreon.com/slash/WeirdThings. Again, Patreon.com/slash/WeirdThings is where you support this program. You get our After Things podcast earlier. You get access to the RSS feed that mm-hmm. you that you you be able to put in, set it, and forget it. That's Patreon.com/slash/WeirdThings. Thank you so much for everybody who supports us. Uh, Bryce, was there? more to that story uh well I, you know i had a side jag here um uh, about this the, this this verge article gets into some kind of um interesting uh aspects of of the way that sbf and and his crew talk but uh they they linked to this washington post article from about uh, a year ago and i think it's still really timely uh this is taylor lorenz internet algo speak is changing our language in real time from nip nops to lay dollar bean um, as, uh, as art of, as AI and, um, auto transcription is used to moderate more of these social video platforms, um, 
people are finding that they have to censor themselves. They have to change their words so that they can talk about what they're trying to talk about without being somehow soft blocked, hard blocked, yeah. taken down. It's why it's why you see like uh, uh, when somebody is talking about sex, they will refer to it as like S three G G S segs segs. Yeah. And then, and then when you do the text to speech, then it kind of sounds like it's saying the right yeah. thing. And then it's or um, uh, even even in news stories, right? Like I will see uh, from a news station, and they will they will do K K uh, asterisk L L <laughs> M asterisk oh, R D E R yeah. because uh, there's you never know the AI. No one's you know if the AI if the AI picks you up, uh, it's a lot of work to get a human to look at you, and so. Um, you're, you're just seeing more of these, uh, euphemisms, um, and, and it's on a lot of different topics, eating disorders, uh, anti-vax discussions, mental health issues. Um, and, and so wait, what's a nip nop or the dollar bean. Mm. So the dollar bean, uh, if you, if you spelled it out, uh, uh, it you would, it, it would for lesbian L E S. Lay S oh, for the dollar sign. Gotcha. Um, I, I think Nip Nops is nipples. Oh. Uh, we've seen Unalive for dead. I've seen that one. Uh, yeah. Spicy eggplant. A lot of the eggplant stuff for yep. uh, vibrator. Uh, SA for talking about sexual assault. Sexual assault. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of that going on. And I, and I think, at least in my anecdotal experience, it does make it tougher to traverse these social networks where mm. I need to go like, uh, the, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, the, it's it, happening it, to you too. No, no. Ah, it's not. it's ah, happening ah, to you I, too. I, it's, Join us, it, Bryce. But, but it's not. Join <laughs> us. But it's not a, tr it's not, it's, it's not a social trend. It's, it's a form of soft censorship. Mm. It is a social trend. It, it, is, it, is, it is a social trend. Self-censorship. But, for the trade-off of greater audience. Like, you have always had a trade-off of speech for audience. That's never been a question. You you never have the right to go on somebody else's platform that has cultivated a standing audience and say whatever you want. There's always been a, a, a version of that. The difference is that now it's not just middle class, it's all entry. And so if that's the case, then everybody is moderating their speech in the same way that they would moderate your speech for a clean club or something like that. It's just now that we want a lot more of our conversation to happen in public, that just has to, it has to happen. It has to be encoded. Uh, if, 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 if you want people to randomly see what you had to say. Right. Like, I, I don't have to use any of that when I am texting Bryce. Now, if mm -hmm. I message or messages or whatever, uh, if, if WhatsApp or Signal or something like that started imposing stuff like that, I would agree with you more. Then I would say, okay, you are now in a more Orwellian sense censoring speech, and I now have to go around it so I can say what I want. But all of the platforms that you're talking about here – are broadcast platforms the same way that radio and television were before. It's just in a different way. And uh, for the price of not having government regulation, we have corporate regulation. Well, I, I think the form that we see of it is it can be improved, uh, at least. Like, the, it is... Uh, Take it up at the shareholders meeting. Well, like, there's... A lot of times you can't find out what you did wrong or or you won't be told even why you won't we've had videos that get taken down and they won't tell us why and we look through the rules they say hey you i don't know you violated Actually, community guidelines and you look you go through it and you go we didn't oh, do any of this this, this, this is, a different actually conversation. is very, very legit hilarious like within within youtube uh one part of youtube's brain is like well keep a file on videos that we know that are quite good don't make them all explode at the same time instead hold on to some and when things get a little bit quiet take what you know to be a good video put it out there see how it does and then 
that part of the brain executes that within the algorithm. Then all of a sudden, a video that is 133 days old suddenly gets 2 million Explodes. views yeah. in one day. Then the other part of the YouTube algorithm brain says, whoa, this is invalid traffic. And so you get a warning that says, uh, we have shut off monetization on one or more videos because this is invalid traffic. We don't know how you pulled this off, but somehow... This video's really blowing yeah. up. And then about like the next like day. Like you woke yourself up <laughs> farting. Yes. You algorithm. <laughs> you woke yourself up because you farted too loud. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, now, this is something that I, I do. I am in general more of a hands-off guy when it comes to government and the internet because I, I find the internet to be precious. And I don't, I think that any kind of government regulation would be, should be done with a light touch. But I am in favor of this. Posters rights. Okay. I believe that posters on all the, platforms, the, those, who post. those who post, should have at least some rights. Limited, but enforceable. Lay and out. some of the stuff yeah. should be, uh, uh, just let you know, A, like... Uh, Tell uh, us the rules. TV has rules. That, They've got a big book that, of rules. That you should know what you were suspended for, and if uh, uh, there is a punishment, you should know the method and duration of it. Mm -hmm. This video has been demonetized. It will be demonetized forever. I, I, this I, should, uh, this we are is going to a suspension. This, uh, this is, yeah, and it will be suppressed for 30 days. I, I would right. go a step farther where it's like you should have the ability to uh, write a subheading on it. It's like you guys do know this is an always sunny in Philadelphia meme, right? Uh, like, like, like absent of context, some things could look horrific. Sure. I, I, my, my, my thing is just trying to regulate transparency because right now you have – and, and look, it, it's an unenviable task. Content moderation on these platforms is hell. Awful. It's awful. Hell. Hell, hell, hell. If you think that it's bad, it's worse. Uh, I've – you know, I, I think I've told this story before, but I once was out one night with a friend of a friend who worked as a contractor, not even an employee, a contractor for YouTube. And so she went to a cubicle farm somewhere in the South Bay, sat down, and every time she clicked next, she didn't know which YouTube flagged video was a dog where Prince was playing in the background and which one was the worst things on the internet. Yes, what you're thinking, probably worse. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. horrifying. Like, that stuff gets uploaded to all of these platforms constantly. Like there are sickos out there that are that are like intentionally putting that out there. I agree, and they should all have the ability to say this is a reference to Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Okay, the thing is, they they have uh, disclosures, and disclaimers, and things. Uh, yeah. Uh, so my point is, I know it's going to be an uh, an onus on those uh, companies, but at the same time, we have now woven social media so far into our culture; it has taken over so much of our communications that I do think that you should have some kind of transparency. When I was covering the Ohio Senate race in the midterms, I was in a room with JD Vance, who is now the Senator from Ohio. At that point he was a candidate and Donald Trump jr. And so you have two people that are relevant on national politics, certainly relevant to Ohio politics. And they to go to a Q and a at least three people in that crowd. Can ask about anything. These guys were taking questions on anything. And, and a friendly crowd asked, can you get me unbanned on Facebook? Like, that's how much for that crowd it mattered. And we can say, ha, 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 Boomer said a thing and then they got banned, blah, blah, blah. But, like, when you don't know why you were banned or if you're banned forever or if there's any appeal, like, this is the kind of stuff that happens. So I, am, I, am, uh, I do believe posters' rights. Posters rights. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, and, and I don't know what that looks like, but I, I think. I think it's just transparent. I think you deserve a fair shake. I think, <laughs> you know, that's. I, I think that's what people ultimately want is let me have a fair shake at your GD thing. You yeah, because you guys are talking about it in the sense of it being a business. Like, like you guys are are As keeping an audience. You are yeah. you're putting stuff out there. Like this is this is not just your craft hobby channel. This is, you know, you're paying people's salaries on stuff like this. Well, and uh, uh, I, I don't think it would be terribly complicated for, let's say, exam uh, for example, you get to a statistically significant number of subscribers. Uh, uh, hey, 
your video, we're about to release it. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to gather a focus group of 10,000 people will be invited. We expect 800 of them to respond. They're going to tell us whether or not this violates rules. Uh, based on that, we'll go. Uh, that, unfortunately, what happens... That is going to take so... That's so time-intensive. Uh, not, not... Google's lobbyist is here. Uh, well, you're... Uh, like, what type of threshold are we talking about? Like, 1 million subscribers? 5 million? 10 million? Because you're, you're saying you're going to get an 800-person focus group to pre to 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 watch a video for for ad suitability yeah i i think we can and it can happen very very quickly uh, uh, uh do i i don't i i can't imagine what that looks like can can you ex, ex, explain what, what I mean, you uh, think what it looks like is a random sampling let's say you have a uh, hundred thousand subscribers uh uh, uh ten thousand of them get an alert saying hey you've been invited to uh determine ad suitability on this thing uh it'll take exactly three minutes of your time it's a three minute long video it's like yes no uh 80 percent say no uh 20 percent say yes now you have two thousand people who are watching it uh, let's say maybe 10% of them actually finish it, you still have a statistically significant sample of 200 people, 180 of which said, yeah, there's no problem with this. 20% said no. Uh, that would make more sense than what we have right now, which is one person said, I don't like it. And then, and then it gets killed for days well i mean well then you're going from one cook to ten thousand cooks yeah but but the, the 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 question with that is not about whether or not ad suitability is different from the right to post or the right to post to your audience in my opinion yeah. because that is about the advertisers well the platform's confidence in an advertiser not being upset so like uh uh I, I, I am very much on your side in terms of, you know, th there being some kind of transparency to like, hey, can can I just give you a video and you show it to whomever you want? Like, uh, we'll, we'll post, we'll get everything done a week early, you know, uh, and then for anything live or, or really, really close, we'll just roll the dice. But like for, for stuff that we were really selling ads on that we really or, or that we really are counting on, we would like it to not just be randomly demonetized. Uh Mm -hmm. do whatever you want here if I, how early do i need to give this to you the platform to have some kind of actionable feedback that i can bank on i i can very much understand that as as a need and again none of that would ever happen unless there was more onus on the platform caring about the poster uh i would have a hard time seeing that happen with youtube because they are an ad sales company. Everything else is filigree. Yeah. Uh, got another story here for you. Hell yeah. Uh, I got serious on that one. That was good. A little bit, yeah. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, your alarm goes off. What are you doing? Crying. I ask myself, is life worth living? Should I blast myself? <laughs> Tired of being poor. Even worse, I'm black. Do we need to take a break? Are we good? Everybody? No, that's good? no, that's a Everybody? song. I, I was just going for a cheap That's line. the way it is. I mean, I mean, I, internet, internet, internet. That's just the way, way it is. is. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da. Some okay. things will never, never change. change. All right, so your alarm goes off and you start singing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruce Hornsby in the Grange, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I. Your alarm is going off. What are you doing? I, 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 I turn it off. I turn off the alarm. Which button do you hit? Oh, I turn it off. I, I'm not a snooze man. You're not a snoozer? No, I hate snooze. You hate snooze. Hate it. Right. Don't like it. You can't uh, trust it. I mean, unfortunately, I have a different type of alarm. Uh, it, it it goes off reliably at the same time, and uh, it sounds like this. Let me tell you a story, Bryce, because I spent a week here. <laughs> You've never seen a happier Brian 
than the Brian that has justified to himself and his wife that he is sleeping at HQ for tonight. <laughs> that is a joy, a joy like <laughs> that that you have never seen on Brian's face. Then when and because he has to back into it, he can't just loudly declare, "I'm staying at HQ." Right. He has to go uh-huh. like. Uh, I don't know. Jeez, you know, full moon, uh, you know, <laughs> crazy things, man. Justin's here. He might fall over and, and break his leg. Like, I just, you know, I'm, I'm just, just thinking. Just like I the just safest think I, thing I could do. Save us and just be better. He thought it was here. Yeah. Ari slept here largely because he does not have to wake up to. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, when you're staying at HQ, do you have an alarm? Uh, no. <laughs> That's why I get up at eleven. It's great. Uh, all right. Okay. So yeah, I'm 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 not a snooze guy. Yeah. Okay. I like I like the I like hitting the snooze a little bit. You would. I know. Well, because I set my I set my alarm a little earlier because I know sometimes maybe I'll sometimes I'll oh, one of those. Uh, what? If, what do you? No, I'm not doing that. Uh, so this is a new study that found that hitting the snooze button for about thirty minutes had either no effect or improved cognitive performance on tasks after waking up compared to abruptly waking up with an alarm. Check the methodology. Okay. Replication crisis, crisis. This is absolute <laughs> nonsense. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, they- as my partner said, yeah. <laughs> they took uh, 31 habitual snoozers uh, and tested them in lab conditions mm-hmm. and gave them 30 extra minutes of sleeping. Now, this was in a snooze type setting where you uh, uh, had to hit a button and you got nine or 10 minutes extra of sleep at a time. Uh, they found that. Uh, the participants lost about six minutes of sleep in the whole sleeping uh, cycle, uh, but they uh, uh, got up a little easier. They got up a little, a little easier. They a little easier. A little easier. How do they? Uh, how do they measure a little easier? <laughs> They gave them tests. They I, oh yeah. Oh my god. Are they gonna be the the next Starfighter? <laughs> <laughs> That's the Excalibur strategy. That's yeah. been banned in twenty five yeah. quadrants. Oh, giving them tests. What are they? What are they? they go, giving them the ACTs? <laughs> I um I, I I don't. I'm I'm trying to see if I can find that here. Replication but... crisis. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> nonsense. <laughs> Uh, they also surveyed over 1,700 volunteers to see how widespread snoozing is. 69% of respondents said that they hit the snooze button or set multiple alarms at least sometimes. This is uh, honestly, this is one of those studies that exists only so morning talk shows can have something to talk about. What do you think we're doing? I know. Here? No, <laughs> what do you think I, we're doing here? I know. Well, number one, this happens in the afternoon. What do you so think I'm doing here? Checkmate. <laughs> Exactly. No, but I think, but where, where right. we have the balls to pull I've, the. I've never gone fully to your side faster in my entire life. <laughs> I'm not against this. <laughs> Just a little... Now we're against meta. No. Now we're against meta. <laughs> Look, this is a real study. This was published. Ten days ago, uh-huh. in uh, 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 where was this? The Journal of Sleep Research. Yeah, he almost just. I want just my desire to have you be the only person who said the f word on this podcast kept me from. You already said it. You said it, yeah, you said it earlier. You missed it. it. Yeah, you forgot right. that you already. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah no, I watched a mark at that time. <laughs> uh, this is from Stockholm University. Um, but they they did find that there were not any differences between snoozers and not snoozers in terms of mood, stress, sleepiness, or sleep architecture. Snoozers tended to be younger and evening types and reported more morning drowsiness and shorter sleep. What do you think about this, Brian? How do you feel about this, Brian? Uh, on your morning I, cup I, of I, Joe. I used to be a snoozer. I think we all used to be snoozers. Yeah, but then, uh, but then I started having to, you know, catch planes, and then that was maybe the that's maybe that's it. It's like once you live a lifestyle where it's like you can either make thousands of dollars or you can snooze. Yeah, pick one. So it's like it became. Uh, I would set one alarm and feel okay. I set two alarms. I felt pretty good. Three alarms, four alarms, five alarms, all one minute after the other. Then I would call 
and I would say, yeah. hello, will you give me a wake up call at exactly this time? Oh, it felt even better. And then I learned that little AM FM radio and I'd add another alarm. And then only after I had built a fortress of knowing for a fact that there was no way I was going to sleep past 4.35 a.m. and I would definitely, definitely make it to my flight, could I actually even fall asleep? I think mm. that's the, 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 the mix up here is the benefit to uh, uh, being a non-snoozer is not in the waking up. It's in the being able to fall asleep. I definitely have a harder time falling asleep when I know that or sorry when i don't know exactly when i'm waking up mm. like i i can sleep a lot better when i am like i know like all right i'm gonna get up here or i know i'm sleeping in at which point i'm just not gonna have an alarm right uh but if there's any variability of like well maybe this is gonna happen maybe this isn't gonna happen or i gotta wake up and call somebody to see if a thing is going to happen I can't get any sleep. I'm always, I, I constantly, my body is like waking myself up. It's like, oh, is this the time where my, my dream will be about this thing happening or not happening? So uh, uh, even I, and we've had this discussion a lot, Brian is a very restless sleeper. I am a, a very like conked out sleeper, but we are dead on in that assurity of waking up preserves sleep in general. It, or in your, in your instance, yes. creates it, creates yes. the, the availability for it. Yeah. So, but but now okay. you want to know what? It, it now, feels... now we're now we're putting this into. I do think that Brian and I are specialized cases enough mm. that even past our traveling days, I seem to have held a little bit more onto the idea of of like, all right, no, I I get up. You I seem like you have a very regimented morning. But you want to know what? But a lot of that came from the pandemic, where I I forget where I first read it, but it was something that like sleep your body knowing when you sleep and knowing when you get up and knowing to expect that is huge it 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 sets up the rest of your like functions basically so if i know that i wake up at 5 30 in the morning then i know i should be lying in bed by about 9 30 <clears throat> i should be getting to sleep around 10 30 if I'm past 1030, then I'm on borrowed time. Right. Right. But that means I now know that that is borrowed time. I'm thinking about it as borrowed time. And now that the iPhone has what it is like, we were out <clears throat> last week uh, 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 with uh, uh, Bill Oakley, name drop. But like at 1030, my phone goes into do not disturb mode. Yeah. Right. And it's like, <laughs> like sleep time. And I think we were still at Moe's Tavern at that point. We had another several hours to go. But I knew, all right, that this is me. I'm I'm ramping up. I know I need to because my body's going to think that I want to go to sleep. So even when I'm not doing that, at least my body's like, this is weird. This is a weird night, but I, your body's not readjusting to it. And I, I think that's that's what I have found in my modern era about not snoozing is that I need to protect. If 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 I let myself sleep later and later, mm -hmm. then I will stay up later and later. Well, I, and, I will and, just and be shifting that window. That's the mm -hmm. fear is that you just keep on drifting out of sync with the rest of humanity. And it's like, uh, uh, yeah, bad news, bro. Uh, uh, you took four more hours than usual to fall asleep. You're still going to get up at this time. Yes, you're going to be very tired all day. But good news, you're going to fall right asleep tonight. Yes, that the, the hope is... That in some way for you, yeah. it's like, yes, the exhaustion will, will will be doing its part to create equilibrium so we do not have another night like we had last night. Right. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, listeners, let us know. Uh, are you a snoozer? Weep. Does snooze and help you? I, I like My snoozing. wife snoozes all the time. Those nine minutes And it feel... drives me up. Oh, whoa. Okay, but they feel so good. They, they're, oh, oh, they're nine minutes. You can do so much in nine minutes. But you're not doing nothing. Oh, you're good. Eh, you're so I, much. I, will, I, will, I will make a case for the, the nine-minute snooze. Uh, you won't fall all the way to deep sleep, mm -hmm. but you'll get back to that delicious, weird REM. You'll get to watch a movie. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what. I did one of the most delicious experiences Ooh. of my life let's get back was when i was uh oh it's weird <laughs> you, uh, made... <laughs> you said okay well i don't know what you're gonna say now but uh was uh, back when i was living in hoboken 
Uh, I would commute into lower Manhattan. My roommates would commute to Brooklyn. But that meant that they had to get up earlier than I did. And hearing their alarm and waking up. Every morning began with... (laughs) <laughs> just listening to them the showers going you hear murmurs and i'm just oh, oh, me, 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 oh me. these two <laughs> i would i'll tell you what now that's something if <laughs> yes, if, if, if yes. i slept with like a headphones <laughs> if if that could just be slowly piped noise. in Other in the morning to up. slowly wake me up oh my god i would always wake up with a smile on my face <laughs> Actually, I agree 100% on that one. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I think we have time for one more story here. Uh, which one would you rather hear about? Uh, Thai food or a silent film? Silent, silent film. film. Ooh, okay. A 104-year-old silent movie that was thought to be lost forever has just been discovered. Uh, the 1919 film Sealed Hearts uh, has been found uh, in England. And uh, it appears to be a full, uh, a, a mostly full copy a print of this movie. Uh, this was directed by Ralph Ince, who was uh, prolific in the silent film era. Uh, this was found in the basement of a film collector who had passed away recently in uh, Northwest England. And um, uh, uh, apparently they worried that this wasn't the full film because there were only four reels on it. But... Uh, they, they believe this was the UK version of the film, which certainly had stuff edited down, they say. Um, and so they believe it is uh, complete gotcha. as it is. Can I, can I tell you guys one of my favorite? I very, very rarely bring up wrestling because it is uh, uh, very annoying to people I, who do I, not I, like I, wrestling. I've noticed that about you. But I will bring up things that are very extraordinary. And there's an extraordinary thing happening on, in the AEW promotion which is that one of their female stars, they have turned into a silent movie actress. Oh, that's brilliant. For this reason. They have picture-in-picture picture, uh, advertisements. And normally what will happen is they'll be in a match, and then all of us will be like, we continue this in picture-in-picture. Picture. And it's, you, know, you almost always know that nothing's really going to happen during that part of the match, but it does create a better sensory thing where you can look over there and there's another thing. Uh, but now they've decided that they're just going to have a black and white once a show. They will have a black and white silent movie in the picture in picture. This is so hot. <laughs> this is so But it's good. great because it's because it's a silent uh, uh, thing that you don't normally play the the sound from the the action. Picture. You're playing the sound from the commercial, and they just have an actual thing. So, oh wow. Okay. So so they'll even. Pl- They'll do like a frame during the commercial. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> That's wow. Okay. Well, uh, 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 AFI uh, 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 talks about the story of Sealed Hearts. It's about a multimillionaire who hates and distrusts women uh, and convinces his son, his adopted son, Jack, that they are detrimental to his success. He meets a woman, fights with his dad. Uh, a review called it a colorful drama of youthful loves, elderly prejudices, and clashing natures that is rich in beauty, forceful in development, and thrilling in climax. I cancel think- him, sis! <laughs> Problematic. I want him to let's cancel his silent film I was, I was about to say, I, I believe <laughs> only the word elderly... <laughs> was accurate everything else it's not colorful it's <laughs> <laughs> no the sun the sun's a big anyway um so they are working to get it exported they want to send it to the library of congress who will do all sorts of uh examinations Testing and analysis and, yeah. yeah um that's but, great you know i i look forward to a lot more of this i mean obviously uh these things tend to turn up when people die and uh, their loved ones are going through their, their remains and you find things that maybe even the people that own them forgot that they, that they own. But I, I, you know, a, a, a sweet side of a somber uh, passing would be a lot of like just lost media that, that we have come to understand our modern sensibilities are all media should be with us forever. Like post internet, we can't fathom the idea that something is gone. That there are episodes of Doctor Who that are just gone because at that point the BBC was like, "We need tape." 
Like, let's record over. Uh, and and a lot of the stuff has to be somewhere. It's likely that it's somewhere. And I think we're going to find a lot of it over the next several uh, decades. Yeah. Um, but this is a good little story out of the UK. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 good to find any. I, I It's good to find this stuff and hopefully try to preserve it. Right? I mean, that's the battle of preservation is how best can we keep keep this this media this part of the of culture civilization society yeah batman <laughs> yes i love anthropology <laughs> i'm anthropology <laughs> batman yeah. oh, wait, we're all doing it now <laughs> it's infectious we love silent movies it matters to me <laughs> <laughs> find the media <laughs> where's the media i don't care how many phone calls we have to listen to we have to find <laughs> Joker. <laughs> Go to the estate sale. I'm going to the estate sale. I'm oh, looking for the media. Batman, you really shouldn't. <laughs> I'm they, going. No, you don't understand. If they all die, they all have to have an estate sale. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll finally have the truth. Hello, I'm here for Mr. Goldfarb's estate. <laughs> okay. My Katanjari. <laughs> That's uh, that's what I got for stories. You give me some picks. Pick it up. Pick something up for me. I just read uh, uh, Greg Lukianov's uh, uh, next work, uh, different co-author, but it's um, uh, <laughs> what I loved about it is the first page. They're like, we don't love the title of this book. Uh, it's the canceling of the American mind, and they talk about how uh, they just couldn't figure out a better phrase than can't. Uh, cancel culture because like everybody at least knows what that means and everybody hates it so they're using it but they don't like it um uh, uh wow it, 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 oh, okay. it basically it's a it's a screed against uh ad hominem attacks and it in it is a call for people to have important dialogues that that have been unpopular to have for for a fair bit um uh, I liked it quite a bit. I, I thought it, it was an easy read. I think it's only like seven hours long. Mm. There you go. Check it out. Justin? I, I'm just going to pre-pick the Michael Lewis book uh, on SPF. Sam Bankman Freed. Uh, the, the, the chapter that I read was excellent. Look, I, I don't know what people want or expect from Michael Lewis. I feel like a lot of people... Uh, Michael Lewis is one of those authors that you probably haven't read but you read a little bit or you read a magazine article and then you read this and you're like, wow, he's really into it. He really, really talks from this guy's point of view. And it's like, yeah, he spent a lot of time with him. Anyway, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to reading it. Nice. Uh, I got a pick. Um, this is not, uh, this is a game, uh, but it's not out yet. It's uh, a demo of a game that I got a chance to play the other day and the, the, the demo is free or, and it's out now. Um, it's called Crow Country. Uh, it's on the PC, and I think it's on the PlayStation. Um, this is set in 1990, and it is a, a horror game with a, an aesthetic of kind of a 90s uh, horror uh, PlayStation title, but it's fully in 3D. Um, it's interesting. Uh, you, you, you go to this uh, abandoned uh, theme park that is, is owned and on the estate of a, of a missing millionaire, billionaire, something, and... Uh, you, you're, it's, it's like, it's like a lot of horror, a lot of horror games that are just scary puzzle games. <laughs> um, and, uh, what is nice about this is it does have this aesthetic and a lot of the soundtrack sounds very like a PlayStation, uh, uh, a PlayStation era video gaming, including like the little, uh, the little heartbeat monitor in the, in the item menu. Um, but the, uh, the, the demo is good. It's. 20, 30 minutes or so, um, and uh, uh, and it's interesting. It's interesting how much is in here. I think like just from that demo, playing it, you would you go around these different spots and you would think, okay, well maybe there's not a lot to look into, but it, it there actually is like a lot to read, a lot of uh, lore. It seems like at least, um, and so I don't know. I've got my eye on that. We don't know when it's out. I think they got caught up in all the Unity stuff over the past mm, few months. Yeah. And so they don't have a set release date anymore. Uh, but uh, I highly recommend at least the demo of Crow Country. There we go. Only Crow Country is real country. Crow Country, girls. Ha! Make 
you know you're in crow country when uh, they're smoking cigarettes, <laughs> hanging outside the H-E-B, and they're ignoring the cause of Red Hawks. That's crow country. Oh, yeah, those Only be, at H-E-B. Those would be grackles, right? Grackles. Yeah. And crows. <laughs> <laughs> but you... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll do that's it. perfect. That's fucking <laughs> poetry. There's another F. All right, that's gonna do it here for the <laughs> Weird Things program. You, I learned it from watching you. <laughs> <laughs> what does I say? Not as I, well, not as I say. No, don't even do that. Uh, that's gonna do it here for the Weird Things program. Thank you guys, Brian and Justin. Hey, Woo! thank you, Bryce. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank it, thank for you. Always being here. It's been weird. Hey, good shower. Uh, you guys got a little after thing in the end? A lot of after things. In the end? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll take a short break, and uh, uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna do. Uh, uh, we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about. I don't know. We'll find something. We'll find something. Hi, Justin. What up, dude? How's your Friday going? Oh my goodness, it's Friday already. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, sorry. Wait. I'm just confirming tomorrow. Oh. What is tomorrow? Tomorrow Saturday. Uh, hello, everybody. Let me put a little bit of music on for you. Um, this weekend. Oh, okay. Interesting. Do they not have that? I. Th he didn't. Uh, well, we were conf we were locked in for tomorrow at noon, right? Yeah, I presumed he sent that text message in lieu of just asking to move it to Sunday. Instead. No, we talked about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, we're doing it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I. I yeah. Good. 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 Um, sweet. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't know how to move it. Good either. Yeah. Uh, the Mexican Grand Prix is this weekend. You excited? The Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of jokes going around. You want to know the story of F one? Sure. F1? Yeah. Yeah. So right now, uh, Max Verstappen already has been crowned this year's champion. He's destroying. How many everybody. how many races left in the season? I want to say three. Oh so wow! So we we're, we're, we're yeah. So we've got. So that means he is. Oh, is it normally four. wrapped up this early? Uh, uh is sometimes it, is, it, is. Is, it, sometimes is this it a is. this is a dominant season for him? It's both. It's both. Sometimes okay. it happens, and this is one of the times where it's very dominant. Yeah. Um. So his part his his uh, teammate Sergio Perez. Uh, is is a Mexican driver, and they're going to Mexico this week. Oh, so maybe Cam Naughton Jr. gets a gets a win instead of Ricky Bobby. Well, well, no. In fact, Sergio is really on the uh, he's on the fence, or or rather, he's on the tightrope of if they will keep him at that seat. Oh, he's, okay. He's not doing very well this year, even though he is in by far the fastest car. Uh, on the whole field. Gotcha. Um, and so there's a lot of, a lot of the memes are that uh, uh, Sergio's, uh, uh, like Sergio's guests, Sergio's cousins will be in from town this week. And it's the, it's the twins it's, from Breaking Bad. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Because, <laughs> because he's, he's, everyone's, there's, there's also this rumor that he might announce his retirement this week because there are no other teams he could go to if he left or got pushed out of Red Bull. Mm. Um, and so, there, there, there's some hubbub so about it. It just that. might. Is he an older guy or? Uh, he, uh, yes. I, oh, no, he's my age. He's my age. So he's a little well, where older. Does, yeah, where does that rank in? Because <laughs> I've gotten to the age where, where if an athlete is my age, they're dead. <laughs> That's true. Um, so he, he's 30, the early 30s, 32, 33. Um, is that coming is, to the end of your prime for F1 or, or if do, you're, if you're a, historically mid level driver like he is it's it might be time to wrap it up especially on the back of a not great season yeah um there are a lot of young guys coming up who are really fast red bull has a lot of drivers who who need seats um because they are the hottest team right because they got the hottest driver right well they have the hottest driver but they can't find they can't find anyone to do what he can do it's very funny they've spent so many years trying to get someone who can keep up with Max, and they uh, they just cannot. And they can't. It must be difficult. I have, that, I have to imagine being like the number two, in a in a duel, in a in a. In I mean, that's all, all I can think of is Ricky Bobby. Where uh, for whatever reason, this clip has been going around 
uh, of uh, you know them at the bar where John C. Riley's like, like, hey Ricky, you know, I was thinking, you know, one of these days, like you win all the time, man. But what if, what if I were to, you were to push me, and and I were to win, and Will Farrell's like, like, huh. Well, what what I think you're not thinking about is that if that happened, then I couldn't win. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah. No, you're right, Ricky. I, I didn't think of that. God, that movie was good. God, I should watch, I should watch that movie again sometime. Oh, God, that movie is, that movie Shake is and so bake. funny. Yeah. Shake and bake. Uh, I was like that and the and the the outtakes of them doing the endorsements like just goes viral for no reason mm-hmm. every once in a while. Yeah. Um uh, actually I'm gonna use the hey, facility go ahead. Very, very briefly. Uh if you guys just a moment. How many more episodes of Miami Vice you guys got? Ugh, not many. Four or five. Yeah. Wow. Are you gonna it's, do like a farewell I mean a ceremony uh, or I mean look, uh turns out that uh People don't save their best for the last. <laughs> uh, it'll be a a fond adieu <laughs> that we give. Did Miami you did Vice. you enjoy the Miami Vice uh, homages on this week's Rick and Morty? Uh, uh, oh wait, wh- which ones were they? They uh, when they when they leave, one they're they're dressed in in Miami Vice stuff, and they appear to be oh, living on right, a houseboat, in the Hawaiian, Hawaiian yeah. shirts, and all that stuff. Uh, I I thought. This week's was incredible. It was great. Uh, like, like I think uh, both of them have been really funny. Uh, yeah, no, I, and and I, I am officially over worrying about the voices. Is where I'm at. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, uh, the voices are what they're going to be. Um, possibly what they've already been. Possibly. Uh, like, th- there's definitely when you listen to the fused voice of Jerry and Rick. Yeah, I'm like. I know what Jerry's voice sounds like, and I know what Dan Harmon's <laughs> voice sounds like. <laughs> That's definitely Dan Harmon doing the Rick part of the Jerry Rick blended voice. Yeah, I, I mean, Meryl uh, Barr, a uh, guest on Cord Killers, called into uh, the the stream this morning, and we were talking about uh, uh, Dan Harmon, and and I was like, well, you know, like. He, we were talking about therapy and its relationship to creativity. Right. And it's like, well, I do know that Dan Harmon has spent a lot of time in therapy and his new show isn't as great as some of his other shows, at least in the first few episodes. And he has admitted as much and and even admitted a relationship between the two as much uh, that he's like, yeah, I wanted to be, I want to be a better human to my employees and the people that, that depend on me. And so I have been, I've been trying to be a better guy. Are Uh, Are we getting to the five o'clock thing? No. Okay. What, what, where it got to was, Meryl says, "Yeah, but you know, community wasn't what it was in in for the first nine episodes." And uh, uh, Rick and Morty, he had a co-creator who had a very full idea, and I was like, "Go watch did, those shorts." Did he? Go watch those shorts it, because the 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 shorts that that Justin Roiland did. We're not about, all right, so we take Doctor Who and we have the archetypes of Back to the Future and we'll do a lot of meta commentary. It was, what if Doc Brown just had wanted Marty? Essayed, essayed Marty. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. that was, that was, and everything was a penis. That was Justin Roiland's idea. He everything seemed, else is He seemed Hart. perfectly happy with it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. We set we set the we set the score, and the stage, and the score on the stage is seven to nothing. Ten out of ten. Score. Seven nil. Seven to nothing. Uh, all right. I got a couple of things for after things here. Okay. Uh, you need a break, Justin? No. All right. Here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things podcast, all about being creative professionals, doing stuff on the internet. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, Bry. Hey, man. Hi, Justin. I, I, hey. Oh. oh. Hi Bryce, sorry. Oh, did you? Sorry. Hi Brian. Uh, how's your day going? It, 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 no, it's it's fine. <laughs> no, Brian. What? Huh. How is your day Let's going? Do this. How's your day going? How'd you wake up? Did you snooze? Hit the snooze button any uh, today? No, I I I I woke up whenever I felt like it. When when, when my alarm went. <laughs> yeah, 
There we go. Check out uh, check out the Weird Things episode for that if you missed that. Uh, I got a story here for you. Mm. Have you? Uh, uh, what do you do when you want to find a type of uh, cuisine around you? Wait, sorry. Uh, say that again. What do you want to? What do you do when you want to ty- find a type of find a restaurant or a type of restaurant? I got around you. Okay, go. First thing I do is I think cuisine. How do I separate cuisines? And I think ethnicity. And then I think, oh, what kind of ethnicities are there? And I think, where do they come from? And I think how their their bodies are shaped and whether or not I would want my daughters to date them. You don't need to be, what are you, you don't need to do this. Uh, I, 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 uh, I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> 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 my my point was <laughs> my point was is uh-huh. is we tend to separate our food by ethnicity, right? You know, it's like I oh, think yeah. we got that before yes. it tra- it trailed into you <laughs> saying whether or not I want my daughters to date them. <laughs> How do you? Find- that was the joke. That was the joke because I don't- no one's laughing. Okay, <laughs> you want to find anyway. Back to food. You want to find a specific type of restaurant. How do you do so? Uh, uh, I use uh, uh, either Yelp or Uber Eats, depending on whether or not we want to go to a restaurant Mm -hmm. or uh, open table maybe, but like whether or not we want to go to a restaurant or whether or not we want to get takeout. Those are the two ways that we we normally do it. Uh, uh, Can I confess that like I'm really... uh, (laughs) I'm going to say it this way because it's a funny way to say it. I'm scared of ghosts, by which I mean ghost restaurants... (laughs) Like I don't want to show up. People know at what a ghost place. kitchens are. <laughs> like, I mean, but, but, but but I don't okay. want to actually plan to go out and have an e- evening and suddenly discover I'm in yet another trailer park. Okay. Oh. Okay. Do you so not but, ghost but, kitchens but, but, but food trucks? You want to know that you're going to okay. Okay, because ghost kitchens are a different thing, and you yeah. would never arrive at a ghost kitchen to eat in. Right. Because Although they do show up on my list as places well and i have made that mistake before. you've gone to another restaurant thinking that it was an, another restaurant according to one app or the other okay this is a restaurant and then i showed up and i'm like oh, it's not a restaurant mm. it's a because it was oh, it's a it's a pet it was not a food truck right it was another restaurant no it was just a a, a food truck with nobody there and okay. nobody attending food truck okay yeah okay no, no no yeah so ghost kitchens historically are like at a Chinese restaurant, they are also selling donuts. And so you, but there's no outward signage for that. Right. But if you, you go, go to the Chinese Uber place, eats, right. Your donut. You, you see a separate thing, happy donut. Uh, uh, and, and so you would show up for donuts, but you would not have any donuts because it would be a ghost kitchen out of that Chinese restaurant. That's can, what a ghost I, kitchen is. I, I can rephrase this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a couple of places we all like to go. <clears throat> sure. In general, uh-huh. I want to go, sometimes I want to go where everybody knows my name. And they're always glad I came. I want to go where people know troubles are all the same. I want to go to Backspin. Jesus. <laughs> Edit that out. I'll edit that one. Edit that <laughs> That needs to stay a secret. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, uh, a Thai restaurant in New York uh, thought it might find a way uh, to take advantage of some of the other ways that people find food near them. The Thai restaurant Thai Food Near Me <laughs> has named themselves Thai Food Near Me. This is the equivalent of like naming your college band Free Beer. Yes. So that you could put up giant posters that say free beer, October 12th yeah. at this venue. Yes, that's right. Uh, it was a marketing tactic hoping to attract customers searching for nearby Thai restaurants. Uh, the owners expected the name would boost their search, but uh, instead it became a news story and they got social media attention. <laughs> so at the moment, they kind of can't separate out the publicity from... They, they can't tell the, the SEO from the earned media, but either way, they're they're swimming in it, I'd assume. Uh, uh, let's see. Despite doubts on how well the name capitalizes on search algorithms, it has helped the business grow through word of mouth as more customers have good dining experiences there. Other businesses have since copied the near-me naming convention in hopes of benefiting from seo so 
Uh, can we can we check? Can you go online and find out what the what the ratings are on Thai food near me? Yeah, because I, I I tend to think that that's it's a, an interesting tactic in like a city like New York where you have so much competition that you can be a very good restaurant and still not get attention. Right. If you're in Austin, if you're a really good Thai restaurant, there ain't that many really good Thai restaurants. You you are going to get a reputation pretty fast. Uh, this is uh, because we're in the uh, uh, after things segment. Um, uh, this is the difference between tactics and strategy. Uh, tactics are the uh, the boots on the ground, you're, you're in the muck, you're going to make these decisions, you know, what, what's going to be effective strategy is the long-term view, the thousand feet up, you're understanding, yes, we're going to lose this area, but we're going to gain this area over here. Um, uh, uh, there are some interesting plays uh, up to and including like if you're pure tactics, if what you have is a liquor store, you should not have any words in your signage other than the word liquor, uh, especially if you're in a high tourist area. Yeah. Sure. Because it's like, I want to go to the place where there is liquor. No one cares what your sign, what, what your place is called Johnson from the highway. Johnson & Sons, exactly. fine provisions. Like, but a big, and you see plenty of places that do that. Liquor, nails, s- salon, whatever. Right. Uh, and, and, but the, meanwhile, the strategy play is is to uh, your, <clears throat> app, your Applebee's. It's like there is a unified experience that you will have all across America if, if you are seeking a comfortable place where you know you can get a seared blackened salmon and a double order uh, and, of and a dollarita. Uh, yes, Those and, dollaritas and, and, are the and, worst. And, and, and get real drinks. One dollar week sauce, uh, fireballs, whatever. Uh, uh, Applebee's. Where are your where are your folks? Right. Um, uh, so so I, I how did this play out for them? Uh, well, pulling up the the Yelp here, uh, Thai food near me in New York is boasting a pretty strong. Uh, 4.7. So it's good. It's good food. It seems like the food is pretty good, and it is being bolstered by a lot of that attention on social media. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, it I guess it, it would help to see if we could uh, find other near... Let me see if we can find other near-me places um, in NYC and see well, if they uh, also well, get a... Well, a while you're looking that up, uh, Justin, I, I would imagine that the play is they have good food. It seems to be working in that local area. It's probably not scalable, but if it is good for them, keep on doing it. But if it's not scalable, then maybe they have to rebrand. Uh, what would they do? The initial thing like uh, uh, TFNM or something? Maybe. I mean, I, I think if they have market penetration on being the guys that did it, even if a bunch of other people because did that similar things. part of the story. Well, because also it's like, Restaurants are not a field in which your competition, if it's not run well, uh, hangs around. And if you are not a great restaurant and you're deciding a marketing ploy, then you already have blood in the water. You're probably not going to be around much longer because right. the, the the margins are so thin. So I would say for them, it's probably unlikely that somebody else would succeed doing it. And so at that point, like they might just have a franchise right there. Thai food near me might be the thing. Oh, that's interesting. So if you stay ahead of the crowd, then all of a sudden, everybody who shows up to any other place after a search Thai food near me, they're like, what the heck is Fong's? You know, like, why am I here? Well, I mean, yeah, at a certain point, there is a same same to nomenclature for Chinese restaurants, Thai restaurants. I mean, hell, even like barbecue, something like that, that that gets out of specific ethnic cuisine. Uh, You, uh, you know... There's a million barbecue places here, and they're all some version of name. Blanks. Yeah. Right. Or Blanks yeah. Smokehouse. And they all or... have the same story. It's like, do you love lines? We're so good, we have a line. Exactly. Uh, also, we accept cash only. We have 11 pieces of meat, and we give it away. Yeah. One every third person in line. We name every single one of our cows. And mm. and this one's named I'll have Fred. have Edgar. So it, I am having a tough time finding any of these supposed other restaurants that are using the near me name. Granted, I'm not. Uh, I'm only taking a few minutes here. Was that initial story from a television network? Uh, the Verge wrote about this yesterday. Oh, even worse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess there's a barber shop near me uh, on uh, in Coral Springs, <laughs> Florida. Uh, yes. Yeah. There you go. Opened in Springs. 2019. Um. 
But yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it, it's an interesting it thing. Is, it is an interesting uh, idea. Hey, can we have a conversation? Uh, 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 opening dance. this opening today uh, is a movie that I believe is based on a video game. Is Five Nights at Freddy's a yes. video game? Yes, it yes. is. So it this is. might be one of the biggest video game movies ever, right? Uh, what like after it, it, Super it is, Mario? I guess yeah, Super Mario's yeah, that, because that's gonna that might that might still be the number one movie of the year. Boots on the ground reporting from uh, the fifteen year olds and her friends that I have in my life. Yeah, are, such a long way. Okay, yeah, <laughs> they uh, they've already decided to hate it. Uh, okay, but. I don't know if that makes it good or not good. Yeah, I mean, it's not too much. It has made a lot of money thus far. Uh, the reviews seem to. It was funny because like the one of the Reddit that got subje- uh, that suggested to me is like a box office thing, and it's like, oh, the reviews for Five Nights at Freddy's aren't good, and it's like the top comment, yeah, looks like a generic slasher uh, movie, but set in uh, Chuck E. Cheese, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what people would, would oh. expect from it. Oh, they put this on Peacock first. This is a Peacock and Theater thing. Oh, I is didn't... it Peacock and Theater? I believe people have gone to jail over that. Uh-huh. I I didn't realize this was a semi uh, a simultaneous streaming thing, too. That Oh, wow. Well, I mean, then that's really impressive because it's had a pretty impressive uh, box office haul. Uh, has it? I have not seen what... Uh, uh, what yeah, look yet. up the, uh, uh, the, the box office... On it, I think it'll. It might be the number one movie in the country. I think it might have. Uh, it might uh, be on track to do more than Killers of the Flower Moon and Taylor Swift. Do Do, do you guys think that we're going to get the movie draft back next year? I certainly hope so. It was a real big differentiator for our comedy show. Wait, <laughs> what do you mean? Well, because everybody just sits around and horses off and makes jokes, but we had the movie draft. You know, are killing thing. each other. What? What? Yeah. Come on! You gotta, <laughs> we gotta teach you the game. We gotta, you gotta get you the. UCB this wasn't book. even a game. This was just talking about our, about our draft. No, the the improv term. Oh, the game. Oh. The game. oh, no, I know. Yeah. yeah, I was not. I was trying to have a legitimate conversation no, about Brandon. I agree. The riff. Uh, uh, so, uh, were here- we not able to see the 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 Five Nights at Freddy's? Uh, uh, Sorry, I was getting, I was busy in, uh, in, in all of our, uh, all of our comedy bits and routines here. Sorry, I'm the one on the Google thing. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, a uh, ten million dollar plus previews, Oppenheimer like levels of early release. So, uh, first day seems a good. Yeah, I mean Oppenheimer, I think, is on track to be the fourth biggest movie at or no the third biggest movie at the box office this year so hmm. I, I doubt it will have especially if it's streaming at the same time uh it will have those kinds of legs but uh it, i think it's it's probably gonna do a, a, a big thing and i think it's blumhouse right uh i think so that's what i saw so you know that the budget wasn't crazy because yeah. <laughs> they, they, they do not do crazy budgets right uh, but yeah, this is this is one of those things that I had always just heard about as a video game trend. Uh, but it wasn't. It, was it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Was it an indie game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the guy who made the first night, Five Nights at Freddy's, he pumped a bunch of them out. He pumped like the first three or four out within, I want to say, a two a span of two or three years, pretty pretty quickly. Um, and they were uh, they're like a horror management games. Okay. You're usually like in the first one, you're in a security uh, office and you can pull up a screen to see security cameras or you can uh, uh, close the, you have a, a door and a light on each side and you have to base, you, you kind of have to track where all the guys are in the pizza parlor. And when they're on their way to, to towards you, uh, then uh, you have to protect yourself. And, and there's a timed element to it. But uh, since then, because those those titles went went buku viral partly because they were cheap, um, uh, and partly because they were big YouTube uh, YouTube Let's Play material. Gotcha. Because uh, it was spooky, and you would see your favorite person scream and yell, uh, which yeah, is now a whole genre of game. Mm-hmm. Just the the spook like like uh, almost designed for Let's Plays. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, and now it's it's blossomed into this big franchise. Obviously, you have this movie. They had some spinoff like 3D game a few years back. So it's it has blossomed into this um, this horror franchise that I think the guy who made it is a, is stepped away from and doesn't seem like there's much uh, uh, lapse in popularity for uh, for it. Well, I, uh, I, I, I think the shadow of this property is much, much larger than the original thing did, you know, where it's like, you know, uh, uh, I, I suspect more people know the song Jack Black sung about Five Nights at Freddy's than actually played Five Nights at Freddy's. And uh, uh, so so mm-hmm. it does make sense that this would be a easy cash in well, where, where it's like everyone's talking about this. Let me experience it. I, I've been to the Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I have never played it. I did not know that it was themed in an animatronic restaurant. Oh, okay. And I did not know that Jack Black sang a song about it. I had no idea about any of that, other than there was a popular video game series called Five Nights at Freddy's, and I was blown away to see that it was. Uh, uh, it looks like it might be on track. To have the biggest October opening uh, wow. of all time, studio expecta- expectations are ahead at of Taylor Swift forty million to fifty million. Wow. Uh, okay. Interesting. Oh, no, sorry. Top five all time October debut. You're right because I'm sure Taylor Swift is going to be the number one. Wow. Uh, but yeah, that's For, forty to fifty million in its first week is. Mm-hmm gigantic considering i can't imagine that it costs that much to make no and then it being a horror movie it being a video game adaptation like there's kind of a lot i think that is very dicey about the proposition but if people like it like that's great i i'm not like a big i'm not big on five nights so i don't know i don't think i mean that's the thing is i kind of think it ain't our demo yeah and and i i think the fact that your daughter has an opinion about it is the sign that it is their demo. Right. Because if she didn't... You know, Are she, they doing right by the real story there, there, of Five Nights at Freddy's? There's plenty yeah. for which they just don't give right. a rat's ass about. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but the the decision to be like, oh, is it good? Is it bad? Blah, blah, blah. Which means if you care that much about it, you're probably at that age, you're probably going to wind up seeing it anyway because... Your friends are going to see it, or they're going to have opinions. And you're gonna or have I'll have just watch it on Peacock. Exactly. That's only yeah. $8. Like, yeah, there's a lot of plays here. Uh, That's the part that intrigues me the most, is is the simultaneous release. Because, of, 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 boy, oh, boy, have you know your Netflixes and your Amazons been very, very protective about anything coming out in a movie theater and having any amount of exclusivity or whatever. Mm-hmm. But 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 if Peacock is like, yeah, man, everybody watch it, go. Uh, that, well, and that's it's fairly unique, and it's universal all the way through. So I, it, there's synergy there. Um, synergy. synergy. Yeah. Uh, let us know what what uh, if you saw the five five the five nights at Fetty. Have you well, fri- seen- have, have you or someone you've known uh, seen five 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 night n- n- nights? No, there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, so I got one other thing here for you. Cool. Uh, you've seen uh, that Google is uh, uh, in court in the U.S. versus Google trial. Yeah. Uh, the antitrust lawsuit going on. Mm-hmm. One of the things I wanted to pull out of that. Um, because they've been very tight-lipped about about what's going on there. Uh, we have known that Google pays Apple some very large amount of money to be the default search engine on iOS, mm-hmm. just like they pay a lot of the other browsers to be the default search engine. Yes. Um, at the for a long time, we had not had an idea of what that amount, what that sum was, other than it was gigantic. Uh, we believe we have the number now. Would you guys like to guess how much Google pays Apple in how they, they paid just in 2021 for that default? Yes. But first I would like to compliment ourselves on how well dressed we look like the crew from strange new worlds. We are solid colors, a lot of solid colors. Like we would be in different departments. Uh, captain, I would say, uh, uh, is it $300 million? It is higher than $300 million. Mm. 
Is it $800 million? It is higher than $800 million. Oh. Captain, is there a number higher than $800 million? Uh, yes, there is. There are quite a few numbers above it. Quite a few numbers above it. <laughs> are, are we into the Bs? Uh, 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 two, are we talking two bills? Two billion is not high enough. What? Is it five billion dollars? It is not. It is way more than five billion dollars. What? <laughs> and, and, and just, just per to, year? Just to clarify, in 2021. Yeah, just the 2021 figure. Uh, the, the New York Times reports a rather specific figure. It says Google paid Apple about 18 billion dollars in 2021 for that default. You could almost ruin Twitter for that amount. <laughs> <laughs> we have heard uh, there have been rumors that the 10 to 20 billion dollar range has been what it is but yeah google pays that every year to apple to and be, by the way or they've they paid that ever like they've paid for the privilege of doing that i'm imagining that that figure got that high because they maintained that relationship even as those companies hated each other mm -hmm. got hated each other and angry. apple hated Google, and Steve Jobs died hating, believing that Android was stolen product from uh, uh, Apple. Like, I can only imagine that every year that number goes up, and it is probably higher in the year of our Lord, 2023, than that figure right there. And the fact that Google has paid it without blinking, right? Like, because you never hear that... Uh oh, like Apple's seeking other bids. That deal just gets done. The, uh, the mm -hmm. closest we got to that was over the maps thing. They, they went to outside sources for the maps. And it, yeah, initially not it was used Google, Google maps. maps in a long time. Right. Well, yeah, but they built their own product. No, they, they, yes, they, they went to, uh, uh, what was it, TomTom Tom or something? They, no, they, they, they licensed another product and improved it. But or, well, I, I, I don't know where the the the, the progeny, progeny of it is from, but like it's it is Apple running running their maps division. It's an Apple app. Yeah. Right. Um, right. But yeah. the data is not Google data. Yes. Right. Apple owns that data. But before there was not an Apple Maps app. There was Google Maps was the default Maps app. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, uh, this is the Reverge, the Verge reporting on the Times. Uh, according to the Times report, Nadella was right. In recent years, threatened by improvements to Apple's built-in Spotlight feature, Google apparently looked for ways to undercut Spotlight by building a similar feature into Chrome, which, quote, presented users with quick facts and information from files, messages, and apps on the device. So it seems like there was, there was a very contentious relationship um, across all of this, right? I mean... Google has an entire suite of apps on iOS that are very good um, and uh, ostensibly for quote unquote free. Um, Google makes that available e pretty equally to, to, to Android. It's not like they say uh, a lot that the Android version of Gmail has this feature. Like they, they don't even really play that game. So uh, uh, could, could we pivot very briefly just to speculate wildly about... Um uh, uh, we know that Microsoft was an early investor in ChatGPT4 and in, in OpenAI. We know that OpenAI is going to be able to license their stuff wherever it's going to go, okay. uh, which leaves uh, a couple of different characters. You know, you got your Alexas and your um, Series. Um, recently, this past week, there was a uh, headline that said, um, Apple announces we're going to spend billions of dollars on having a cool AI. And it's like, is that that's how, not, how do you read that do you read that as they're late to the party and playing catch up or they're going to catch up pretty much overnight justin i read this as uh apple's already done a lot of machine learning stuff there's a reason why it knows to show me uh pictures of well, exactly brian, one year ago brian as daredevil and bonnie as she hulk at my halloween party a year ago because it knows 
who I call. It knows uh, uh, that it's around that time of year, and this is the sweet spot to show me pictures that that are uh, relevant to me. It, it has gotten pretty good at a lot of machine learning stuff, mm. uh, uh, including the reason why I use Apple Maps more than Google Maps now, because it uh, uh, knows where I go. Oh, and yeah. It, and it just knows, especially when I plug it into my into my uh, car. It's 20 minutes to where you're going, buddy. It just, it just I, it's a faster a solution <laughs> apropos of nothing it's just like 17 minutes to get to thomas springs head on over yeah right yeah, yeah. and also and i use it I, I rely on it because right now there's a lot of traffic uh and so there's three ways that i can get here and it will help me decide which way is the best way by its own data so yeah. uh, uh, uh that, that's well, that, that's something where I, I think that is all to say they're not starting from scratch here they do understand that there is a huge uh, uh, chasm between where they are and where, let's say, GPT-4 is. Sure. I think that they very much understand that there is a shorter runway because, you know, we we have been privileged enough to play around with uh, a GPT-4 voice. But, like, I, today on my stream, we were talking about the no voter thing. Listen to PX3 with Brian from last week. Uh, but I just asked... Chat GPT, and the audience didn't know that I wasn't asking Siri. Uh, and I just asked, like, how long has it been since non voters didn't outnumber the amount of voters for the winning candidate? And it just computed all of it and told it back to me. So it's like mm -hmm. Apple has to look at that and say, okay, uh, we could, an option on the table here would be to. Take that seventeen billion dollars that we uh, <clears throat> that we get from Google, and either push that and or more to OpenAI to say how would how can we figure out how to reroute all of our Siri traffic uh, through this and 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 have it be a thing. So I think while OpenAI is in bed with Microsoft too, so there's there's probably enough things that say like eh, that might be a little squirrely. Yeah, but. And and also for Apple, My, yeah, Microsoft it, is an investor in OpenAI. Yes, and also like Apple doesn't hate Microsoft in the way that they hate Google. Weirdly, despite the fact that like you know old heads like us will remember Apple and Microsoft as the as as the defining rivalry, that really became totally jumbled up as soon as <clears throat> Google started specifically going after Microsoft's. Uh, profit centers by creating free uh, uh, copies of them. The entire office suite. Yes. That like, uh, 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 so yeah. And then Apple hated Google. And so now I don't know, but, but it's so for, yeah. for oh. Apple there, I don't think they're looking to make a, a chat bot. I, I think for them, they, I, I don't I, I don't know. Maybe they will make a chat bot and just show me up, but well, they have a chat bot now. Yes. They pioneered, Voice assistant Cortana. It, it, Siri is not a chatbot. I would not say. So what would what would you define as the difference between Siri and a chatbot? Mm. Uh, a a a chatbot. Uh, I I I wonder if voice is a part of it, but I tend to think of chatbot as like very much type typing an input and then receiving the the output where. I think Siri is meant to be more of a uh, assistant. Crappy chatbot. Do do replies to text messages for you, um, but I. But I mean, I, that's what it is now. Yes. But also, and, Siri sucks now. Okay. Like so. I'm 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 not debating that. What I'm yeah. saying is, I don't think Apple is going to make a Chat GPT shaped chatbot. Uh, ultimately like maybe they know i think that they will work it into their program sorry go yeah. ahead um i think they they expect a lot of value out of like finding other ai uses throughout the phone the only time that they mentioned ai really in that last uh update of theirs was in the spell check the new spell check and autocorrect stuff is using the ml uh neural engine stuff and i think it's a, i think it's gotten a lot better i think it does a lot better job of figuring out what i mean to say and what I'm going to say. And that's a small feature that everyone who uses an iPhone uses. You know, you don't opt into it. You don't sign up for it. It's not an app you install. It's just 
autocorrect is a little better and it's the thing everybody touches every day. Yeah. Uh, sorry if you if you heard me saying that it was going to be a chatbot. I, I, I agree with you. I don't yeah. believe that they are going to build a chat GPT competitor. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I, they'll look for more bespoke po- uses like that. Well, no, I, I just think I, Apple's DNA is not to do what, let's say, Google is doing with their new phone, which is advertising a new phone by saying it's got AI right. phones with AI. Because for Apple, they didn't sell a phone and be like, multi-touch gesturing with pressure-sensitive glass. Right. They're like, interact with your phone. Perfect Touch interact. Your phone. Touch your phone. No right? lag. They, they no want delay. that it just works thing. Did, uh, did you guys see, made headlines uh, a couple of days ago, uh, it's been around for a bit, but but uh, the pendant that that, oh. that has the yellow thing, uh, uh, you mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about? I do. Okay. Justin, do you, to explain uh, it to Justin while I I'll explain it to you. So so um uh, uh imagine you you have a, a I don't know a Star Trek communicator yep. pendant, um and uh, its big gimmick is that uh, it lights up with a yellow light whenever it's watching and listening or whatever as a courtesy to everyone around you, but. For you to get the information, because we've talked about, you know, glasses and all that stuff, uh, what you do is you put your hand out in front of you and it just lasers onto your hand what it wants to tell you. So it's like maybe we're at a party situation and I'm like, oh, who's this guy? And I could I could just hold my hand out and it says, you're looking at Justin Robert Young. I'm like, oh, that's right. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a little projector device that you wear. Uh, I think they have it set in like a, well, like a pocket, a shirt pocket. Yeah. A pocket square. And, and yeah, the idea is that it, uh, is just around. They've, they've had demos of this thing. Uh, no, I've heard for a while. this is and, a company cause they did it at, and, at one of the big fashion weeks with like Anna Wintour, right? Right. Uh, uh John Gruber is how I found out about this, and he was very skeptical about it when they revealed it during their TED Talk. Yeah, well, you know and, you love when real products get debuted at their TED Talk. Well, and and uh, uh, I, from the outside, this is my first time seeing it. It looks an awful lot like a thing that was in development, and then they realized, what if we added the words AI to it? Uh, is uh, however having having said that. Uh, the idea of, of of essentially just holding your hand out. I mean, I, I don't know. That seems pretty cool. Be really funny. You held held your hand out, dick butt. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I, or, or a picture Jailbreak of the, the driving crooner. I'm like, you see this? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could you could cha- you could I bet it you could get the angle just right. So no, you, you would hate it, Brian, because you can't share it. It's supposed to only be between you and the pendant. You would be taking no, I, so I, many I, pictures. I, I, you would be taking so many pictures. You guys got to take a look at my hand, yeah. man. Oh my god! You the, are a sharer. You you, you want you see a thing that makes you happy, and you immediately want to share it. All right. Do we think this is a good idea or a bad idea? I think it's a dumb idea. I don't think it's a good or a bad idea per se. I mean, I, I think that it, it might be a good idea technically uh, uh, as a way to process information uh, to kind of keep that amount of, of info in your uh, uh, ability. So, all right, it's showing directions, per se. It's got finger gestures. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I don't like this technical solution, and I think that there are probably more elegant ways to get that information uh, to you. But as a way of, you know... A lot of things need to die on the evolutionary chain on the way to a solution that really uh, right. kills uh, it. And uh, I think this is one of those corpses. The the failures subsidize the successes. However, I will say this is the type of thing that would cause me to wear a proper jacket because there would be a place for it and then I could use it and I would dress better. I, well, it looks like they've got it pinned in some of these photos. So you might not even necessarily, you could put it on a lapel, it looks like. Yeah. Keep it charged. Another thing to keep charged. Oof. Okay, now you got me. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder with the battery life on it, I can't imagine that it's insignificant. Well, well I'm sure it lasts forever because it's not real. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, sure it's got uh, a uh, three uh, million uh, milli hour, <laughs> milliamp hour. Like it's. You can hear it, heat it to thirty thousand degrees. <laughs> 
my pick uh, is the play date. The 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 little. Oh, you got one of those. Uh, it, it finally showed up. Oh, those are cool. Uh, I enjoyed. What is it? An hour and a half I spent with it before my daughter Calliope snatched it out of my fingers. She has been playing it non-stop so it's th- adorable and it's great this and is a, a, a handheld uh game console a la a game boy uh but it is modern it's got uh, a, a nice screen it's got wireless it has a little handle on the side the, a little crank the, the crank on the side is an actual game dynamic device uh yeah. that, that gives analog input or whatever um they have uh, a they also put out a bunch of games with it so when you buy it you just get you just have a crap ton of games, games, yeah. Right, and new ones keep coming out every single week. And uh, if you want to, you can buy ones that aren't available. But it's like my daughter is constantly like, "Oh my gosh, next week this one becomes available." I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, it's it's delightful. Uh, 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 so you guys got one? How uh, were you, you? You mentioned it finally arrived. How long did you guys have to wait? Because I know it's like a super a long year. Order. It only took one year. Wow. <laughs> Good Lord. But, but but then when it showed up, I was like very, very happy with it. Um, uh, meanwhile, a friend of the show, Andrew Main, uh, he, he, you know, he's already moved on to other things that he thinks are better. But but for, for me and, and my daughter, uh, this thing has been a delight. They have a little uh, a surfing game that is reminiscent of uh, uh, California games from Epics. It's great. I really, really dig it. Nice. The play date. <laughs> 